Good evening and welcome to the Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting. It is November 7th, 2023. It is 7 p.m. Call this meeting to order. We do have a quorum. Tonight I will have the prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance will be with Alderwoman Haas. If everyone would please rise for the prayer and the pledge. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we just ask that you would put your hand upon our city, that you would bless our emergency personnel, that you would be with our injured officers, that you would give wisdom to this board to make the right decisions for you and your people. We ask that you watch over the nation of Israel and you would, you would undo any evil that's being done and bless those people. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> First item we have is to approve the minutes from the October 10th, 2023 regular meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes. A motion to approve from Alderwoman Haas. Is there a second? I had one uh, comment about that. I'm sorry. We, we would need a second to open it up for second discussion. Second for discussion, please. Yes, uh, there was an error in the consent agenda. It says approved by Alderwoman Hobbs, second by Alder, Alderwoman Hobbs. It says Hobbs in there twice. I believe you're referencing Alderwoman Haas. Other than that, that was the only edit I saw. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion passes. Next, we have the public comment period, but I don't see that we had anyone sign up for that. Then we have the departmental reports. Police Department, Chief Mays. All right, you have the report in front of you. Just a few things to talk about here real quick. I, understand there's a uh, rather large increase in vehicle burglaries. 30% uh, of that is due to a single incident that occurred over at the Amazon warehouse parking lot. So that is uh, contributing to the vast uh, increase there. Uh, shoplifting thefts are up. I've uh, talked to my command staff. We're gonna be engaging with uh, Walmart. That seems to be the epicenter of our problem. And we're gonna be trying to coordinate with them in terms of reducing that as well. Um, outside of that, if there are any other questions regarding the report, how are our officers that were injured? Officers are doing well. Um, they're both still recovering, and um, we have uh, been in contact with them on a regular basis, and uh, we are you know, just making sure they understand that we fully support them in their recovery, uh, both uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, and uh, we look forward to the day that they can you know, re return to work, uh, but we will be there to support them until they are able to do so. so. With your two officers out for the, the shooting, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm sure you was, uh, uh, how is that affecting the, uh, the, the, the staffing? Uh, how many, how many uh, pro, pro, uh, patrol officers are we like in now? Uh, I believe that we are uh, approximately 14 vacant positions, but uh, with the, prior to my arrival here as the chief, I know that they had taken the crime suppression unit rolled back into the patrol operations so that we could handle our calls for service and make sure that we're responding to calls and patrolling appropriately. And we just had two young men uh, graduate from the academy uh, outside of Knoxville the other day. So uh, for the two that are out due to the unfortunate shooting, uh, we have two more that are eager, willing, and able to, uh, to service the citizens here of Laverne. Thank you. You betcha. I just want to say you guys did a great job Halloween night. I mean, they were, they were out, lights going, making sure people were going slow and watching for the kiddos going across the street and stuff. So great job. Good. Thank you. I'll make sure we pass that along. Mr. Mayor, I guess my comment would be is look how professional he looks. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Good to have you back, Chief. Glad your son's doing good. Thank you. 
And as time goes by, you will learn that I will pick on you up here <laughs> in public while the people are watching. Well, that's quite all right. So, and I'm looking forward to, uh, actually, I think my son uh, should be able to travel here in the next month, and I'm looking forward to him coming down and maybe staying a week with me here. Oh, so, good. Yeah, good that'll deal. be fun. So, thank you. Thank you. Speaking on picking on chiefs, Chief Beasley, Fire Department. <laughs> Frazier. I saw the order that the monthly reports were supposed to go in. I'm really glad I was not following Miss Donna in the library. <laughs> so uh, I do trust that each one of y'all have had an opportunity to review the reports for the month of October. Uh, I think everything's within standard run totals. Uh, we're just a bit ahead as we were last year this time by about eight or ten runs, but nothing significant to discuss. We are still under a burn ban, correct? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Commercial and recreational burn ban. And we use the, the fire marshal uses several methodologies to determine that based on weather, uh, the forestry department, um, as well as I believe the TWRA information, because we do have the significant TWRA property down there. So it's not just an arbitrary, we decide to put on a burn ban. There is a systematic approach to that. It deals with the weather and the humidity and all that. Any other questions? Uh, when the cold weather and people usually use alternative heat, what can you suggest to people who's got fire places, uh, wood stoves? Uh, <clears throat> the wood stoves, if you're asking a reference to the burn ban, that is not included because it's an enclosed burning area as a barbecue. Oh, just a safety the issue. The safety issues that I would highly recommend that they have a recognized chimney sweep service their uh, chimney itself. There's two different types, the, the prefab, which has the metal interior, and then you have a, a masonry, and both of those need servicing. Those that are masonry need a thorough inspection all the way to the top cover. And, uh, and then uh, auxiliary heaters that people put on floor, that, that is a dangerous deal there. Those are some of the most common heat uh, fire causes during the wintertime. Obviously, uh, their frequency of use during the wintertime over the summer makes common sense. However, you need to keep a safe distance, which is greater than three foot away from anything flammable. Uh, if you're going to use um, the plug-in style, you would obviously need to keep no covers over, nothing over the top of the extension cords, no extension cords, and nothing over the electrical cords uh, supplying that. I know most, I've been going to stores and reading the boxes, most all of them now, if they tilt over, they automatically go yeah, off. That's most, any modern, any modern heating device will have an automatic turn off on those. That's not to say something that could be 20 years old and somebody still have it, so that's definitely a concern. And what about Station 1? Station 1, we, uh, again, I, I regret, as last month, I regret to say how well we're doing. Um, I will just say as of <coughs> Monday, our monthly meeting, we have no foreseen challenges ahead of us right now. Uh, and we are just a little bit ahead of schedule, so. Seeing some exterior happy. brick going up. Absolutely. That brick on the, the far right-hand side, close to Gambrel, mm -hmm. uh, really looks nice. Um, those selections of bricks in the two-tone color, I believe, will be a, a great look on that road. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Library Department, Ms. Donna. <laughs> Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman, good evening. As you can see, for the month of October, our numbers have stayed pretty good. We're very happy with them. The 81 new patron cards, we do welcome those people to our library. Uh, we had a lot of fun in October. And the first part of November, our goblins and goodies was very uh, well received. We had, no, oh, excuse me, that was parks goblins and goodies. That was very well received. Good job. David. <laughs> we were there and we enjoyed that. Uh, we had spectacular science is what we had and it was very well attended. Uh, 130 people were there and they had a great time. We enjoyed having them all. If you will look to the right 
of the report, you'll see two scarecrows up there. Those were two of the 21 scarecrows that were made on Saturday, November the 4th. Uh, special thank you to Miss Becky for coming up with this great activity. The families loved it. They had the best time. Uh, as you can see, Kevin's scarecrow is wearing Kevin's clothes. Kevin and his mom had so much fun, and they are ready to build another scarecrow. Gemma loved choosing the outfit for her scarecrow, and Gemma brought her mom, her baby sister, and her grandparents for this family fun activity. So it was a really good time. We really enjoyed that. Some things that are coming up are November closures. Uh, Veterans Day, we will be closed along with the city on Friday, November the 10th. And then we will be closed on Saturday, November the 11th. Our Thanksgiving holiday, the library will be closed Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Coming up in December, come visit Santa and Mrs. Claus at the library on Saturday, December the 9th at 1 p.m. Mrs. Claus will be having her story time, which she always enjoys doing, and Santa will be hanging around waiting to meet with all the children about 1.30. Uh, we say it's from 1 to 4, but as long as there's a child in the library, Santa will not go anywhere. And we always have cookies and, and water and milk for the little ones. Our book sale is going to be happening finally. It's going to start uh, January the 2nd when we come back from all the Christmas festivities. So beginning January the 2nd, we'll have books, DVDs, audio books, just a lot of different items. And there's something for everyone at a really good price. So we would love for you all to visit our book sale. Something that's not on our calendar right now, but I would like to let you know. Uh, well, first of all, the library board will meet Monday here in the boardroom. That is our regular bi-monthly meeting. But United Way, for many, many years, has done uh, tax prep for us at the library through their VIDA program which is the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. I met with Debbie Curtis uh, a couple of weeks ago, and she informed me that United Way has now taken on two more counties. And so their volunteers are being spread out across all of the counties that they assist. Unfortunately, some facilities needed to be cut, and our facility was cut this time. So we will not have Vida at our library this January, February, and March. She assures me that she will do everything possible to get us back into the rotation. So for now, our patrons and our community people who would like to still take part in the Vida program, which is free, uh, they will be able to go to Smyrna or to Antioch. They're opening a facility in Antioch. And the library will post those, and I will get that information out to Anne so she can get it on the website. Because I know this is a very important resource that we were able to offer. But I wanted to go ahead and get that word out now. I'll be talking about it again in uh, December and in January. And of course, as always, you can discover more programs and resources by going to our catalog.lavernetn.gov. Any questions? I've been meaning to tell you, and I keep forgetting, thank you for showing me how to use the coat hanger. My grandson jumped all over that when they showed it to him, how, to, how, how easy it was. Oh, okay, That Excellent. he could do it. So Good. it worked out great. Thank you, Ms. Donna. You're welcome. Parks and Recreation, Mr. David McGowan. Mayor, Vice Mayor Board, thank you. You guys have the numbers for the parks for this past month. Um, you see our upcoming events, um, November 11th, that'll be our Veterans Day celebration here at City Hall. It starts at 11. 
Um, December 1st, um, the snow rink opens. December 2nd will be our Parade of Lights and the Winter Festival. Parade begins at 5 p.m. The festival actually begins at 3 p.m. at City Hall with vendors set up and the snow rink will be open um, at noon. That runs from noon to 8. Um, that will um, include the festival, the tree lighting ceremony, the parade, um, fireworks, arts and craft vendors, snack vendors, and Santa and Mrs. Claus. Fireworks scheduled to go somewhere around 6.30 probably, 6.30, quarter till 7, somewhere in that area. Um, you see our past events, Goblins and Goodies was in the zombie night. We, uh, we ended up canceling the zombie night, so we did have the Goblins and Goodies. That was a good turnout as always. You see our past senior events. Um, upcoming senior events next uh, Thursday, I believe, November 16th, will be their Thanksgiving dinner at the Multipurpose Building from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Upcoming meetings, um, November 20th, uh, we will have three meetings, Senior Center Advisory at 4.30, um, Parks and Rec at 6, and the Greenway Advisory at 7. Uh, snow rink times, Fridays from 5 to 9, Saturdays from 12 to 8, and Sundays are from 12 to 6. Any questions? Sir, what um, what dates for the snow rink? Is that through? Is that just for it's that one through, weekend? No, it's through. I will get you that. I believe it's through the end of the year or right be the week before Christmas, I think. Okay. And with the Winter Festival, um, carriage rides coming back? I will have to double check. I believe they are on the agenda. Don't quote me that because I think we had issues with the vendor last year, so we were <coughs> searching for another one. So... I'm not 100% positive if we found a replacement vendor yet. Okay. And um, were Mr. and Mrs. Claus invited to the parade? They are invited to the parade. Um, we got a pretty good end, so I think we can get them to show up. Um, as far as the, like, switching the order we go in, now I know how Danny feels, and it's not a very desirable position to be in, so. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? David, have you come up with a date yet for, like, uh, for uh, children special special needs um, we generally do that on a um, Sunday so let me get with Kathy she's okay. been kind of stretched a little thin because our staff is kind of supporting the senior center also so let me get with her in the morning and we'll get that posted and get that out and David can you speak about this uh, about the uh, 11th the 11th that will be take place here at City Hall in the boardroom at 11 o'clock um, right now we have two speakers signed up um, Sergeant Timpson from the LPD and uh, Brian Morse, who is a service representative for uh, Scott Desjardins, will be here in the house. And do we have our Grand Marshal for the parade? We do have the Grand Marshal. Um, I'm not 100% sure that has been pushed no. out there yet, but we do have an acceptance, and we're kind of waiting on a bio from him until we kind of make that public. But we do have an offer and an acceptance. Any Thank other you. questions? Just uh, we need to get that day in the park planned up so it'll rain. Ain't no doubt about it. We could use it right now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, David. Finance Department, Ms. Tanya. Well, Danny getting off easy tonight, ain't he? Good evening. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Alderman. Um, you have the financial report in front of you. Um, this is the financial report for September. Just a reminder, um, in October, on the next report, you will start seeing property tax income come in to offset that revenue. Uh, our sales tax is still trending up. We are 642000 above budget and 298000 above our prior year. Um, and then you have the rest of the report with our balances in our prior year comparisons. Any questions? Not a question. Just I know I, whenever I'm here, I see a lot of people going down to tax department to pay. So good to see that. Yes. Starting October 1st, they head that direction. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, the water treatment department. Mr. Danny Campbell. Didn't get off as easy as I thought I would. But. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Board. Uh, I trust that you've had the opportunity to review our monthly report for October. Since I wasn't here for September, that was because everybody took the entire month off, so nothing happened at the water plant. Uh, 
Any questions regarding October? Talk to me about the customer complaints. Yes, sir. So we had three customer complaints this month. One was for uh, brown water, one was for low pressure, and another was a customer calling in regarding uh, some paperwork that was uh, put at their, their door regarding a possible leak that they had uh, at their address. For the brown water complaint, it came from a bathtub on their third floor. So when our inspector went out there, they talked to, uh, talked to the resident and Public Works actually had uh, an employee go out, flush the hydrant near them and talk to them about their water heater. And I guess a lot of rust or color came from their water heater. I spoke with the customer today to see if he was still having uh, issues. He said no, he was helped uh, very <coughs> thoroughly, was very happy with, with the, the um, support that he got from, from Public Works. So. And then for the uh, second complaint regarding low pressure, the pressure at the location was 75 PSI at the home. The customer was aware of possible an internal issue going on where his uh, PRV was connected. So he was pretty handy with that information or with that, that type of work. And so he was going to, uh, to take a look at that. He hadn't for the last week and a half or so is what he advised me today when I talked to him. So Danny, can you also talk to us about the water conservation, uh, voluntary water conservation that's out there? I could, but I think, I think someone else was wanting to come up and talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to steal all the thunder, you know. Our, that's our, why I didn't post my scarecrows. Our, our newlywed here, yes, Michael sir. Deeds. Thank you, Mayor Board. Um, just a quick update. So yes, as most of you have mentioned, we are in severe drought um, status per the U.S. Drought Monitor. As per our drought management plan, TDEC approved, we are required to enter into phase two of that plan, which requests us to ask for voluntary water reductions. Our goal is 10%. Um, we ask that you do not wash vehicles, don't swim, uh, fill swimming pools, irrigate, things of that nature. Um, we're not of any concern as far as the plant goes. Plants operating fine, distribution systems operating fine, but we are required to follow the plan. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Danny, one last question for yes, you. So we're getting close to winter. Yes. And so um, have we been checking the tanks to, as far as the monitors that are out there to ensure uh, some of the issues we had last year will not be reoccurring this year? Yes. Uh, from all our communication with those tanks are, are up and running. Uh, I can't control, unfortunately, I can't control the weather and what happens with the communication if there's ice or any buildup for at the McFarland tank where a lot of those issues, where everything is, all the connections run to there and then come back to the water treatment plant. So everything that, that should be working right now is working and we will do our best to make sure that that continues to happen so that we don't have another, another uh, occurrence like we did last year. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? I, I've noticed one of the questions y'all probably hit on it is I've noticed the lake going down. It always goes down in October, but you talk about conservation, conservation, but I don't see the lake no no lower than usual this time of year. I, other than you know the the, uh, the dry grass and everything, mm -hmm. but the, but the lake is 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 seems like to me a little bit fuller. Then it usually is this time of year. And and we at the water treatment plant, like what Mike said, is we're not we're not seeing any effects with that. But I know county wise, from speaking to representatives from the state, they have they have other water utilities that are having trouble pulling from their sources that either lead into the lake or whatnot. So it's it's not just a Laverne issue. It's a it's a Middle Tennessee issue. I know the the elk the the. Uh, the duck river might, but 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 the Percy Priest Lake, it's it's uh, it's low, but it's not it's not to the winter winter pool yet. And that's why we're not seeing anything any requirements to to limit our pool from the lake at this time. So we're hoping that 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 stays this way, and then we get some water, and we don't have to worry about that. Any other questions? Thank you, Danny. Thank you. Good to see you back. 
Moving on to old business, second reading ordinance 2023-24, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2023-2024 general fund budget. I need a motion to approve or deny. I make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. I have a second. Alvin Waldron? Aye. Alderwoman Hobbs? Aye. Alderwoman Haas? Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. Motion passes. <clears throat> Moving on to second reading ordinance 2023-25, an ordinance to amend the impact fee ordinance to add an annual adjustment for construction cost inflation. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second from Alderwoman Haas. Alvin Waldron. Aye. Alderwoman Hobbs. Aye. Alderwoman Haas. Aye. Vice Mayor, no. Aye. I vote aye. Motion passes. Second reading ordinance 2023-26, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2023-2024 police impact fee fund budget. I need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. I have a second. Alderman Waldron. Aye. Alderman Hobbs? Aye. Alderman Haas? Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. I vote aye. Motion passes. Moving on to the consent agenda. I need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Vice Mayor No. Is there a second? Second. Second from Alderwoman Haas. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Moving on to new business. First reading ordinance 2023-27, an ordinance to amend Title 16, Chapter 5, Section 16-502 of the Laverne Municipal Code uh, and amend the City of Laverne fee schedule regarding the moving of houses, structures, or buildings. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. I have a second and a third from Alderwoman Haas and Hobbs. <laughs> Alderman Waldron. Aye. Uh. Alderwoman Hobbs? Aye. Alderwoman Haas? Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. I vote aye. Motion passes. Resolution 2023-22, a resolution of the City of Laverne, Board of Mayor and Aldermen to declare property owned by the city to be surplus to the city's needs and directing disposal of the same. Need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second. Alderman Waldron? Aye. Alderman Hobbs? Aye. Alderman Hobbs? Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. I vote aye. Motion passes. Resolution 2023-23, a resolution to accept phases one and two of the Lieutenant Frank Walkup subdivision. This received a favorable recommendation, recommendation from the Planning Commission on September 16th, 2000, or I'm sorry, September 26th, 2023. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderwoman Haas. Is there a second? Second. Second from Vice Mayor, no. Alderman Waldron? Aye. Alderwoman Hobbs? Aye. Alderwoman Haas? Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. Motion passes. Moving on to approve um, or remove board and committee members. First, we have the uh, Laverne Housing Authority. We have... Um, one term that is vacant and we have an applicant for that um, that is deborah harding so i will appoint her to that term then moving on to the planning commission we've got um, one term expiring that's terry coleman terry does wish to remain on the board and we have one applicant from a few months back russell maddox um, I will reappoint Terry Coleman to the Planning Commission. And then the Senior Citizens Advisory Committee, we have um, one vacancy due to uh, Anthony Honeycutt's resignation as he's moving out of the area. And um, we have two applicants. We have Frankie Brooks and we have uh, Chuck Isbell. And I will appoint Frankie Brooks to this board. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second for discussion. Well, this is just an appointment. It's not a motion. So we can't talk about it? Well, we have called the roll. Evan, is it permissible to, we've called the roll. It's, it's the call of the chair. I mean, if you want okay. to entertain conversation. I, I will. 
I, I just wanted to say that I know both of these applicants very well, and I think either one of them would be great. Uh, I know Chuck has been trying to get on this board for a while, but I also know that his new job is uh, is time consuming. So uh, I, I just wanted to put that out there. Just just let him know that uh, I think he's a good candidate, but I also like Miss Frankie. Okay. Any other conversation on it? Okay, so I've appointed Frankie Brooks to that board. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. That motion is approved. Last item, approved change order number one with Barron Construction LLC for the Public Works and Community Development Services Facility. Need a motion to approve or deny? Uh, motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Vice Mayor. No, our second that. Any discussion? Alderman Waldron. Aye. Alderman Hobbs? No. Alderman Haas? Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. Uh, and I vote aye. Change order passes. Moving on to Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderman Waldron. Remember, like always, check on the elderly. Make sure your pets had ample shade, shelter really this time of year, and fresh water. And it's a good time to winterize your house and your car. Uh, when you set your clock back like we did Saturday night, that's check your batteries and your smoke alarm. Uh, good time to check your HVAC filters. Uh, put new batteries in your Smoke alarm if they need them or not. And uh, thank you. Alderman Hobbs. Just want to remind everybody of the Laverne Rescue Unit. They're having a country ham breakfast on November 11th from 6 to 10. The cost is $15 per person. Come out and have some breakfast before the Veterans Day ceremonies here at City Hall. Alderman Hobbs. Uh, just great job, Parks and Rec. For the goblins and goodies, I look forward to the Veterans Day ceremony and then our parade of lights the 1st of December. As always, you all do a great job on the ice rink, so it's going to be a great holiday season. Vice Mayor, no. I got two shout-outs. The first one is to Michael Dietz and his crew, and he had some help, and we finally, after a couple of years, uh, I've taken on that Jefferson Pike thing kind of proudly, and Michael and him has uh, been down there working on it, getting it cut back. I stopped by there today. That rock is a little bigger than I think we all anticipated. <laughs> but uh, they're beating away on it. And also, I just wanted to say thanks to John from the driveway group uh, for bringing that electronic dumpster up here to the senior center a couple Saturdays ago to let everybody know. Uh, we collected $468 to go to the seniors and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to get uh, gift cards and some other things for them for Christmas. That's it. Thank you. I actually heard some very good things about that and many people asking when's the next one. So. Well, that'll be something that Miss Jules is working on. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, well, I want to remind everyone about Winterfest and the uh, Parade of Lights, December 2nd, 5 p.m. It's always lots of fun, lots of activities. Um, love to see the board come out, decorated cars, people in the community, uh, different businesses come out. It's, it's always an amazing event. Um, Veterans Day ceremony is on the 11th at 11 here in the boardroom. Um, our team puts together an amazing uh, amazing event and with some powerful stories so please take a moment to be sure to come and listen to that um want to ask that uh we keep our injured officers in your prayers i know i, I get many phone calls and messages from pe from our residents asking how they are um so i, I really want to ask that you keep them in your prayers um do want to uh congratulate michael Dietz on uh, he, he's our 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 newest uh, married man here at City Hall, so congratulations, sir. And um, just want to ask uh, that there's continued prayers for uh, the uh, country of Israel during the, the war that, uh, regardless of the sides, that peace prevails. With that, call this meeting adjourned.